Good morning, everybody. It's me, your boy, Waddles. Welcome back. It's that time again. One day later than usual, but to be honest, it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't change the fact that this is a real, true, hard, cold snapshot. Not a figment of my imagination. Not a hallucination. Not today. Today, Thursday, September 23rd, 2021, Snapshot 21, W38A released. In this video, we're going to go over it all. If you like the Snapshot showcases, leave a like. Also, I'm proud to announce that we officially have more subscribers than all of these countries right here, other than Mauritius. We're in a subscriber race with the country Mauritius, so if you could help me out, uh, get more subscribers than this number right there, that'd be pretty cool of you. I hope you enjoy the Snapshot showcase. Let's go. We'll start with a quick overview of the snapshot. What is... Oh. That's interesting decorating on the villagers part. I mean, I can't complain. Anyways, inside of this snapshot. In this snapshot, we have some copper adjustments or fixes, some lapis changes, some bug fixes, and then tons of technical changes and adjustments. This is a very technical snapshot. As in technically, it is a snapshot. Now, compared to last week's snapshot, 21W37A, this one is a little bit smaller. However, the changes made in this snapshot might make huge progress for 1.18. 1.18 is a very technically intense update, you know, new generation and all, the generation is crazy, it's very demanding. So I'd like to start right here, on the world creation screen. So it's kind of wild, if you haven't played in the 1.18 snapshots, uh, worlds load really slow. I just wanted to see if this world would actually like load faster than normal. Maybe it is? Maybe? I mean, not that any of the changes on the changelog necessarily have to do with world loading, just wanted to see. I would say this world loaded up a little bit faster than they usually would for me. That's a solid start. So performance, right off the bat, I am noticing that uh, performance is really, really smooth in this snapshot, especially as I move around and load parts of the world. This is good so far. The biggest addition in this week's snapshot is actually going to be inside of the settings, video settings. We've always had render distance, that's how far we can see. We have not always had simulation distance. That's the brand new one. Simulation distance is a technical thing. To be honest, I'm not exactly always the best with technical things, but uh, I'm gonna try my best to explain it. So. We're gonna start by lowering this all the way to two chunks. That's very, very low. We'll go ahead and show chunk borders and then put a villager like uh, over here. Now we'll go ahead and go two chunks away or more than two chunks away and the villager, uh, that entity is actually not going to be updated anymore, which means this thing should just stand there forever because I lowered that number really, really low. Uh, so villager, you doing anything? Uh, no, you're not. You just stand there. So if we move closer, uh, it should regain consciousness. Yep, yep, okay, it's moving around. Uh, show chunk borders again. We'll move a little bit farther, and it should freeze as soon as I get... Yep, it freezes as soon as I get far away. That's basically what it is. So in terms of performance, this is potentially huge. I'll have to test it a little bit more, but this could mean that I could raise my render distance like really high, like, let's say 30 chunks. That is absurd. I'm probably going to lag out. Um, but we could raise the render distance really high, and entities that are further off because of this high render distance actually aren't going to do anything. So I still have simulation distance set to two and check this out. Uh, the villager is right there, still not moving at all. And then there are some other things in here like a sheep just standing there. Uh, chickens just standing there too. They don't move because I'm too far away. The cows, same thing. I think I'm a little too far away for them to move. However, as soon as I move closer to them, uh, then they should regain consciousness. Again, like the villager you see, and they start turning and moving. Uh, same with things further off. I don't know what I would usually get on 30 render distance. I don't usually play with it. Uh, but when I'm moving around, I have about 30 FPS. Like I said, I'll have to do some more comparisons. Uh, all that I know is those are some amazing looking mountains. Those look so good. Those look so good. This simulation distance toggle, I think, is going to be huge for this update. Uh, because if you have any performance issues at all, like already, and then you try and load like the new worlds, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not going to be a very fun experience for you. So simulation distance, that's a good call. And hey, look at that. There's a dripstone cave right there. Nice. While we're talking about technical stuff, let's go ahead and finish them off. Next technical change, this stuff right here. Maximum amount of background threads increased. So I think that has something to do with fabrics and clothing. I'm not too sure, though. When it comes to clothing, all that I know is today these knit runners released. I'm not sure how I feel about these. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, they're already sold out, though. So uh, if you missed, you missed. Telemetry. Telemetry? Telemetry? Telemetry. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, really, I'm not the best with talking either. So telemetry is a technical thing, basically to improve the game's performance, to my understanding. 
Uh, the game sends data information to the devs so then the devs can fix things, work on things, I think, maybe. I hope I didn't butcher that, uh, something like that. But this is basically the area that explains it in the changelog. Uh, because there are so many technical things today, I'll link the changelog down in the description. You can check it out right here. It goes into detail about it, uh, very detailed. So yeah, those are technical changes. Those are all things. Now back into the game, we have a new change with sprinting. Sprinting should be a little bit less uh, like sensitive now. So let's say we're sprinting in here and we bump against something like a little bit. Uh, we actually won't be affected, so while I'm running in this hall, I bump against the wall a little bit, I'm still sprinting, I'm still good. The big change here has to do with collisions, so let's say I'm running and I collide into this wall like this, uh, of course, I stop sprinting. However, let's say I'm running and I collide into the wall at like a shallow angle like this, I bumped it, I guess not shallow enough, I stopped running. But if I can like just brush the wall like a little bit like that, I still run. It doesn't affect me at all. If you're running and you hit something like just a little, like you just brush against it, you can actually keep sprinting. I think this will be a nice change for people who use nether highways without boats. Like if you just make tunnels in the nether and you sprint down them, maybe even sprint jump inside of them, this will probably be a nice change. This change is probably going to mean less of that shocking FOV adjustment when you're running and you just bump something, which is nice. FOV adjustments randomly just for a second, kind of annoying this week copper ore adjustment copper ore generates how it's meant to all the way up to y95 uh that's the change basically copper just wasn't generating where it was meant to it generates a little bit more so up in the mountains more copper also the amount of copper that generates in general across your entire world y95 all the way down to wherever it ends has been increased you should be able to find more copper in an earlier snapshot copper generation was increased inside of the dripstone cave biome and walking around inside of here, it definitely looks like I'm finding more copper than I would have before. Now, I never checked out this exact seed in an earlier snapshot, so maybe it's identical. But moving around through some of these spaces, it definitely looks like I'm seeing more copper than I would have before. Moving on to Lapis Lazuli. In this week's snapshot, Lapis has changed a little bit. So previously, Lapis generated in uh, like interesting formations. Like you could expect to find Lapis generating like that and that kind of disconnected. Now it generates like normal ore blobs. So right here, naturally generated Lapis. If I dig around it, it's obviously all connected. Uh, and it's deep. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have a 2x2 two two square. Solid. That's a lot of Lapis. The change here has to do with how lapis actually generates. When it generates, it'll be in a solid blob like all of the other ores. Like over here, we have iron, solid chunk of iron, solid chunk of lapis. As far as I'm aware, it should generate at the same ranges that it generated in the last snapshot, 21W37A. So right here, it kind of happened again. I only have three lapis, but it's all connected. Over here, I have exposed diamonds, or a head. And over here, a little bit more lapis. Let's go ahead and test it out again. And it seemed to work again. Solid blob of five lapis. Not really disconnected at all. Solid. I wonder if the sprinting change was made to make caves like this a little bit better. Like, you can brush against the blocks a, a little bit more and, and keep running. Hmm. Hmm. All right, well, anyways, moving on. Locate Stronghold, and it exists. The Stronghold has been re-added into Minecraft. If you weren't aware, in the last snapshot, the developers were actually considering deleting the entire end dimension so they could focus on the overworld a little bit better. In this week's snapshot, the end dimension is actually back. The Stronghold exists right here, 21W38A. Here is the end portal. I've done it. The end exists again. Nice. That's one big bug fix in this week's snapshot. There is another one. It has to do with the grove. The grove biome is meant to generate with big spruce trees. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Like, does that count as big or is it talking like the gigantic 2x2 two two ones? Uh, I don't see any 2x2 two two ones here, so must not. I see an outpost though. That's really cool. MC bug 236698. Big spruce trees don't generate in groves. The bug has been fixed in 21W38A. We'll try it again. A second grove, and yeah, it looks like big spruce trees aren't those ones, uh, because this is the grove biome over here. It's just normal spruce trees like this. They're big somehow, and they generate in the grove now. That's cool. Minecraft 1.18, snapshot 21W38A. That's it for today. With a smaller, more technical snapshot this week, I would kind of expect a little bit of a bigger snapshot next week. Maybe some new content, deep dark stuff that would be amazing. Even just skulk sensor generation, anything. We'll have to wait and see though. I guarantee you, you won't want to miss any of the snapshot videos or the follow-up ones, so subscribe. Turn notifications on too. Thank you for watching everybody, it's been me. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.